Hey, Magic fans, welcome back. This is your captain speaking here on Captain Class MTG, and today's video is brought to you by me going to Gen Con because I filmed this in advance. So you guys had something to watch while I was being miserable flying on a plane. Because, uh, knock on wood, nothing bad happens like delays or anything for that matter because it's fucking airlines. Ugh. Anyway. Between the cost of tickets because of gas and inflation and everything else, <sighs> I should have just bought a second mortgage on my house. Anyway, point being, while we're in the air and I'm flying out to Gen Con, once I get out there, I will make some news and some videos uh, to the best of my ability to try to upload them. I probably won't have my computer with me, so it won't be pretty, but it will be me. And by that, I mean not pictures of me because that's not pretty either. Anyway, point being... I will put something up, but it, no matter what it is, it will be something to let you know I am not dead or alive, and hopefully I will blink twice if I am in danger. Anyhow, today we're going to talk about standard rotation, which has come back around again, and how it's going to have the effect on the Pro Tour 2. I've only talked about this once, but I'm going to run by it again, because <sighs> there's nothing else going on, and I'm really tired of staring at stuff. I can't find any news. Anyway, moving on, we have standard rotation. So, we'll top it, start us off real easy. What sets are currently legal and standard? So, after the release of Streets of New Capenna, you can see here, all the sets are legal, legal, legal are Zendikar Rising, Kaldheim, Strixhaven, Harry Potter Schools of Mages, oh, sorry, um, Dungeons and Dragons, Adventures in Forgotten Realms, Innistrad Midnight Hunt, Innistrad Crimson Vow, Kamigawa Neon Dynasty, and Streets of New Capenna. Now, the cards banned in this current format, All Runs Epiphany, from, from uh, Keldheim, Divide by Zero from Strixhaven, Faithless Haven from Keldheim, and Omnath, Locus of Creation from, I believe, Zendikar, because it's been so long since I've played this card that I can't remember what set it's in. Anyway, those are the four cards that are currently banned in the set. Uh, I'm sorry, in the constructed format of Standard. Now, as you know, currently, we're running a Pioneer Qualifier to get into the Pro Tour 1, uh, which is all about the change in Pro Tour 2. But before I talk about that change... Spoilers ahead. Let's talk about rotation. So, what rotation means for us is which sets are leaving standard in the next rotation. We have Zendikar Rising, which has Omnath in it. Keldheim, which has Faceless Haven. <laughs> Faceless Haven, reduced to zero, is in Strixhaven. Uh, and Alrons is also in Keldheim. Sorry, I knew there was a second one in there. Uh, Dungeons and Dragons has no banned cards because it's a... Actually, a balanced set. I don't think it sucks. I like the set. Anyway, these are going to be the ones leaving. And remember, Dungeons & Dragons is supposed to be a base set. So we don't currently have a base set to replace it, which I find odd. But anyway, moving forward. Plenty of the other sets are bad enough to be base sets. Anyway, these will be the four that leave standard uh, with the rotation on September 9th, which means on September 9th, uh, Dominaria United will join the fray and new standard will look a little something like this. It's going to be Midnight Hunt, Crimson Vow, Neon Dynasty, New Capenna, and Dominaria United, which we've yet to see any cards for. Um, this is going to be very interesting because, uh, I'm going to be honest with you, if you're building sets just out of these four sets, not counting Dominaria United, um, it's it's bad. Um, it's a lot of cards are weak. A lot of cards are not as strong. I mean, we're losing a lot of good cards in this set, guys. I mean, we're losing the Dragon. We're losing a lot of the mainstay cards that have really made Standard a powerhouse uh, this last couple rotations. Um, so with Dominaria United coming out, it's going to be very interesting to see what these shifts are. Because remember, with everything going out, we're going to lose... Uh, the double power treasure, uh, the uh, I believe the card that lets you double from your graveyard, lots of the dragons. Um, we're also losing the dungeon mechanic, which is kind of a big uh, kind of a big deal for some decks. I like playing it; it's pretty powerful. Um, we're gonna be left with a lot of board wipes, not a lot of good cards. Uh, it's gonna be very interesting. It's even gonna hurt mono green. It's gonna hurt all of the basic archetypes that we have right now. Uh, the only thing it's not really going to hurt, um, I mean, honestly, in the best of my ability from what I've seen, uh, is like weird, there's a weird ninjutsu deck floating around, which obviously is not good once you sideboard, which is why it's not real prevalent right now, uh, but that will be very big, um, 
there's also a black red deck kind of like a um aristocrats deck where you sacrifice tokens with the anvil and do damage make artifacts yada yada yakety smackety um that will become very powerful uh so it's gonna be very interesting where we go next it's really going to depend on what dominaria comes out with um to see what shape the standard format will be in once you start getting those kind of previews right um I really sense with Dominaria being kind of the Phyrexian slash Planeswalker stronghold uh, with lots of Legends going to be in it because Legends seems to be the tone of Dominaria again. Uh, I kind of sense a Planeswalker-ish, maybe control, Planeswalker-ish attack style. Uh, Streets of New Capenna came out with some very good Planeswalkers, especially the new, uh, not Nicobolus, what's that dude's name? Um, Obnixilis uh, for three mana Planeswalker. Um we have the Wandering Emperor from Neon Dynasty. It's very powerful. Um, we have lots of Praetors floating around. Oh, that's another good deck, too. There's an Animate deck that grabs stuff out of the graveyard, which is really annoying. Um, also, not all that great uh, with the current cards we have available, but when you kind of narrow the card pool like this is going to do, it makes those decks prop up um, and become very playable because they're playable already. Um, and until we can figure a way to beat them, they will be strong to begin with. So keep that in mind uh i think it's going to be very interesting uh i actually look forward to the next standard season i look forward to dominaria united spoilers it's going to be spicy guys and that's all i got to say about it i like where it's going uh but who knows with spoiler seasons the spoilers could come out and i could change my tune really quickly so with all that said what does this new standard format or rotation mean for magic the gathering so as i mentioned in, in previous in previous videos uh, you can see here regional championships for Pro Tour number two. The regional championships for Pro Tour two are scheduled between February 25th and the 2nd, 23. Format for those regional championships is standard constructed. So, with that said, top finishers from the regional championships and uh, regional championships earn invitations to the second Pro Tour, uh, with exact invites varying per reason. Winners of each regional championship and finalists, yada yada yada, uh, for the world championships later in 2023. Uh, now I know here it says. Uh, the champ regional championships will be February 25th to April 2nd, but realize the way the current structure is working is you have uh, January, you have February, uh, February, March, April. So that's your first quarter, right? They're going by quarters on how they do things. So three quarters before February is you have uh, November, December, and January. Uh, so you have September and October, and from that uh, time frame, no new sets are going to come out, per se, other than Brothers War. And when it comes out, it will be standard legal, but the standard format is for the three months before February, which I think is going to be around the September-October time frame, moving up to December to feed this Pro Tour 2. So not only is the previous one uh, going to feed this, you know, depending on stats and what have you, this will feed it as well, which is the new standard format. Um, and remember, uh, you have to win the local stuff, which are going to be probably standard. And even if they don't make it standard, because the local invites to regionals, right, can be anything. They could be sealed. They could be standard. Could be pioneer. I think those are the three things that they tell you to use. Um, draft or sealed, something like that. Uh, but at the end of the day, no matter how you qualify, you will have to have standard decks to compete in the regional championships, which means after this, standard is going to be on the menu again like it was in the old days, which is really going to drive the price of these standard cards back up the way they were. As some cards are going to really shine and, and get their money value back, I think. Other cards are going to go a lot higher. I think it's really them trying to you know, reinvigorate the whole magic environment to get more people to buy cards which is going to infuse the secondary market, make things worth more money, and therefore just rise everything up like it was back in the old days. And with inflation, that's going to be a big deal because with packs costing more, cards have to cost more. Because let's be honest, you're not going to spend, you're spending 80 to 90, 100 dollars a box. Now you're spending 115. You're going to kind of prize those cards a little better because not as many is going to be open as original. And you can charge more for them because there'll be less of them. It, it's all the supply and demand stuff. I'm not going to bore you guys with it. But that's my prediction. I think it's a good thing because this means they're actually going to take an active role in fixing standard and make standard better and more playable. Um, 
Now, with that said, like I mentioned in my previous video, I think modern's where we're heading next. So get them modern decks ready, boys and girls, because you're going to have to bust out them fetch lands, which is going to drive the price up again. They're cheap right now, especially enemy lands because of Modern Horizons 2. Modern Horizons 2, I think, is on our last call. So you're going to have to watch that because once they're done being printed and the fetch lands aren't being printed anymore, and then Modern comes out as a format, boom, price to the roof. Anyway, won't get too far into it. Don't want to bore you guys too much. Hope I see you guys at Gen Con. Wish me safe travels. Knock on wood. Everything goes as planned. Uh, if you happen to run into me at Gen Con or if you happen to think you see me and scream, hey, Captain, I'll turn around and be more than happy to take a picture, a selfie, have a talk, conversation. Hell, maybe you can go out to dinner. Who knows? I like fucking food. I'm fat. Anyway, even play some magic. I probably won't have decks with me, so I'll probably have to borrow yours and then steal the cards. No, I'm joking. I wouldn't steal the cards unless you caught me. Anyhow. Thanks a lot for your time, guys. I appreciate it. So until next time, be kind. And as always, I hope to see you across from the game table at Gen Con.